Welcome to the Insight Channel, your user's guide to living life with vision loss. I'm Jazz, I'm a blind occupational therapist, and I'll be your guide. As an OT, we are always assessing the therapeutic value of activities. Usually there's a lot of emphasis put on those meaningful activities that have to do with productivity, like self-care, or daily living skills, or work-related tasks. But it's important that everyone have a meaningful outlet for leisure or recreation. The key is to find out what makes you happy. So if you have vision loss, you can start by asking yourself the following five questions. Do you prefer to be active or passive? Do you find more satisfaction interacting with others or focusing on a task by yourself? Do you have an existing hobby that can be adapted to your vision loss? Are you a creative problem solver or a paint by numbers type of person? Which sense do you tend to favor? Touch, sound, smell, taste, or your residual vision? I like to be active and to feel like I'm accomplishing something. And though I enjoy being with people, I also like being able to focus on a task and having time to myself. Before my central vision declined, I actually used to love drawing and painting. Ironic, right? My mind is always happiest when it's set free to create, so art has always been my preferred outlet for leisure and recreation. When I had low vision, I was able to use magnifiers and a CCTV, which is why I preferred colored pencils, because I could get really close to it without having to worry about the mess. Here are a few of my favorite pieces, just to give you an example. This first piece is a ball python on a white background. I have always been drawn to black and white, so you'll see a lot of that in my artwork. I once had an OT friend tell me that, hey, black and white must be functional for you because of the contrast, right? I didn't think of it at the time, but I think he's right. This next one is also a black and white of a hedgehog on a white background just to demonstrate how you'll see a lot of uh, nature as a theme for my pieces. I've always been drawn to nature. Here is another black and white of an owl in flight, but instead of a white background, you'll see that it has a pattern. I've always been drawn to geometric patterns and how math and science are used to create beautiful works of art. Here you see a similar style with a calla lily and a different design behind it. I have always been inspired by M.C. Escher. This next one shows the same calla lily, but it's in color. I often would take the same subject and, and portray it in different styles. So here you can see that I do use color. When I do use color, it's not subtle, as you can see with this beautiful picture of a bright, colorful parrot. This is one of my all-time favorites. It's a circle with swirls pouring out of it. I love incorporating geometric shapes and white space to create a sense of movement that captures the eye. This big piece here is an abstract of flowers and it was actually the last painting I did before I lost my central vision and I'll be honest with you uh, it took many years before I came back to art because I was grieving the loss of what I could see though my vision has never been normal um, I was, had a lot more functional vision than I do now and when I lost that central vision uh, it, it was a real loss. I, I did grieve and and it took some time for me to get through that process of um, anger and and um, feeling the loss and finally I realized one day that this is who I am now and just because my vision has changed, it doesn't mean I'm a different person and I have to stop doing what I love. And so when I got to that point of acceptance, I was able to think, hey, I'm an OT, I can do this, I got this. 
So I just had to think differently and learn how to enjoy my creative side um, with my new vision or lack thereof. And so I learned, I didn't have to stop creating just because I didn't have sight anymore. I just had to learn how to do it differently. One day I decided to get out my paints and acrylics and just go for it to see what I can do. I started getting images in my head of things that I just knew I could find a way to put on canvas. So this piece I call Blade is the first piece I did with my new vision. And it looks like the blade of a knife piercing through a white line and you can see the changes in color as the uh, silver blade pierces through the white line with a black background. So I decided to focus on math and science to help me to create by using my sense of touch. So I started finding things around the house like painter's tape and different shaped objects that could allow me to use my sense of touch. I enjoyed this so much that I actually turned it into a series that you can see here of four different paintings that are all using um, these similar techniques that I created. Today it brings me satisfaction to create paintings by using my sense of touch, creativity, and my mind's eye. So with this piece, you can see some of the techniques I used in the first pieces, but I've taken it to another level. Um, I've learned through this process to think in layers and to use whatever I need to use to use my sense of touch um, to create the look I'm going for. So I may use things around the house to create a certain line or shape. Um, I will we'll use brushes or sponges, or sometimes I might even use my fingers uh, to, to get that sense of movement, to create the texture or the depth that I'm looking for in a piece. Do some of these brush strokes look familiar to those of you who can see? It's actually reminiscent of the last piece I showed you with the colored pencils, with the circle and all of the colored swirls coming out of it. They're just done a little differently with paint and, and various paint brushes. You can see the transition of my style um, through the uh, through the media and the strokes, I have transitioned from pencils into paint because it allows me to use touch. I have less detail in my pieces, but more focus on texture and creating that feeling of movement. I still have an appreciation of geometry, of course, and you'll see um, a lot of black and white as well as accents. Lastly, I'm going to show you my most recent series, and you'll be able to notice a difference in my um, level of confidence in painting over time. This is called The Elements, so it's four different paintings. The first is Earth, and so I wanted to create the impression um, or the picture in my mind of what Earth looks like, and it's a, a cross-section of a layer of Earth. So you can imagine there would be lots of different texture and colors because you have a blend of dirt and rocks and bugs and, and roots and grass and all kinds of uh, fossils and wonderful things under the ground. And so this is uh, my impression of what that would look like with all this variety of texture and color with earth tones. Second, I did fire, uh, which is a beautiful blend of hot, hot colors, so reds and oranges and yellows that are bursting from the core, which is where you would have your brightest colors. And so all of these um, flames are dancing out of the core to um, give my impression of fire. Here you see wind and water. Wind was a fun one because I had to get very creative and think how can you give something an image that is usually unseen. So I thought of um, taking 
um, colors of wind that were soothing soft colors so pinks and light blues and, and grays and whites and they are sponged on there to create a beautiful smoky blend of color and the piece to the right is water. Now with water, you imagine there are depths and the colors in the water are determined by the amount of light that's hitting that water. So down deep, it's gonna be darker colors and as you get toward the surface, it's going to be lighter colors where the sun is hitting the water. And so I blend colors of purples and blues and greens at different levels to create the um, movement and tone of water. Now the bubbles that are in this piece are at different sizes to show depth. So of course, further down they're gonna look smaller and as you get to the top, they're going to look larger. And so I took a round piece of wood and uh, painted it white and basically stamped that to the painting to create the image of a bubble. I will never know if how I see the world matches the way the world is viewed through the eyes of someone with sight. But that's okay. That's the beauty of art. It's an expression of the thoughts and feelings and impressions of the, um, of the creator. And so I have learned innovative ways to, to get my um, ideas and and thoughts out of my mind and onto canvas. And so um, an example that I'm gonna show you right now is like I mentioned when I did the bubbles on that last piece I showed you. What I did was I took a piece of wood like this. This I think is from an old uh, puzzle of my, of my daughter's. And so I am painting this white around the edges because I know that I can feel it. I can feel it through the, um, the end of the sponge and it's the shape that I need. And so what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna press it, press it to a piece of construction paper off to the side to get the bulk of the paint off, um, cause it gets a little thick. But then I am going to press it to the canvas to create the look and feel of a bubble. Here we go, I'm gonna put it right about here. And there we go. The moral of the story here is that you do not have to stop doing what you love just because your vision has changed. Even something as visual as painting can be adapted to make it meaningful to you. So now you have insight into how this works. If you are a creative person, harness that creativity to figure out how you can continue doing what you enjoy doing. If you need help, reach out to your local agency for the blind for resources. You can even do a search in your area for recreation therapy or art therapy programs where you'll find professionals whose mission in life is to help people with disabilities to connect with productive leisure activities. The important thing here is that you find something that brings joy to your life. Stimulate your senses and challenge your brain so that you can have fun and do something interesting. It will do amazing things for your mind, body, and spirit. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it on your screen, click the thumbs up, and subscribe so you can see future videos that I post. Send me your comments, your questions, your ideas for future videos. I would love to hear from you. And I'd love to hear how you have learned to adapt fun activities in your own life. My job here is to help give you the tips, tools, and techniques to make your life easier with vision loss. So no worries, you got this. See you next time.